Hours. There were also new developments from the investigation into the Capitol attack. Today, former White House counsel Pat Cipollone testified behind closed doors before the January 6th committee. And on Tuesday, a grand jury in Georgia issued subpoenas to top Trump allies, including Trump's former personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, and Senator Lindsey Graham. Officials want to know more about their roles in trying to overturn Georgia's presidential election results. So, Joss, I want to come back to you. What do we know about sort of the significance of Pat Cipollone coming in? There's a little bit of information coming out about what he said and, and how long he was there today. So Pat Cipollone, uh, former President Trump's counsel, was there for about eight hours today with a few breaks. And he saw some lawmakers come out tonight and say they'd learned significant new information, that they were pleased with his testimony. Um, we know that Pat Cipollone was Liz Cheney's, um, one of his, her bigger fish. I mean, she really wanted him to come in. When we've seen testimony from all of these other folks of what former President Trump was doing and leading up to the election, how he was pressing these false claims, the planning of January 6th. Um, and you heard a lot of about Pat Cipollone, but heretofore he had been unwilling to come in and to talk to the committee directly um, on camera. He had done one informal interview. He had cited privilege. And when the committee took a pretty risky step and subpoenaed him, um, and it was unclear what he would do when he cooperated and he came in today. And what you saw from them getting uh, him today is that you have a number of figures now in the former president's inner circle who have come in and given the committee videotaped testimony under oath that have given us a deeper knowledge of what happened that day and the former president's role in it. And Pat Cipollone is particularly interesting because he was involved in discussions about seizing voting machines. He was involved in discussions about some of the more um, spurious claims. Uh, he was at the election. He was at the White House on election night. Uh, he was around in the days before and after January 6th. And he uh, allegedly warned a lot of aides about all the crimes that he feared people would face if they went to the Capitol and if they went through with some of these more uh, grandiose plans that former President Trump had. So he does not have a close relationship with the former president anymore. I mean, they had a quite tense relationship at times in there. You can just um, imagine. I don't think they uh, are necessarily simpatico in almost any way. That said, he had been very... Uh, strident about trying to respect privilege in his mind and not wanting to discuss the conversations that he directly had with the former president. And so the fact that he went in today, we don't know exactly what he said. Um, I think we'll be all trying to learn that in the next few days. But it's really a significant development for the committee. It's certainly a significant development, Jeff. And you told our producers that it's not a stretch to say that Pat Cipollone might be the most important witness that came before this committee. Explain your thinking there, given the fact that Pat Cipollone might change the direction of this investigation or at least add significant information to it. Look, I mean, as Josh was just saying, I mean, there was no one who was really involved from the inside of the White House at that level of a position with that you know, level of experience and knowledge of the law more than Pat Cipollone. So we don't know that he'll be the most uh, important witness at this point. As Josh said, we don't know exactly what he said. But there was no one who had the window into really everything that was going on and potentially, um, you know, he tried to stop from going on. I mean, he sounded the alarm about uh, people's involvement and the president going to the Capitol on January 6th. He knew, uh, you know, a lot of the... the um, the uh, things that uh, the outside legal teams, Rudy Giuliani and others, were trying to uh, cook up, and it seemed like he was trying to throw his body in front of all of that. So I thought, um, you know, uh, sitting down for eight hours, that is a very long time. They have a lot to talk about. I mean, just the days leading up to January 6th, never mind from Election Day forward here. So um, it certainly is an indication that he did not spend that time pleading the fifth. We know that he answered questions. And as Zoe Lofgren uh, said that uh, the uh, congressman from from a California, she said he did not contradict the uh, testimony of Cassidy Hutchinson. Of course, that uh, the uh, top advisor to uh, the uh, White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows. So, look, I think we are going to see since the video, uh, since his deposition was videotaped. My guess is, uh, since we have seen how this uh, committee works, they like to play those videotapes. My guess is, in the coming days, uh, likely next week, we will see some of Pat Cipollone's testimony. But certainly, he what? has more knowledge than virtually anyone else, uh, you know, in a deep level, um, you know, and, you know, mix that with the experience in Washington and the legal knowledge. He has a lot to say. 
and you talk about the hearings coming up. How much, based on your reporting, are these hearings making an impact both on the American public that have been tuning in at least sometimes by the millions, but also among Republicans who maybe are rethinking th their thoughts on pre former President Trump? Look, there's no doubt that not everyone is watching every moment of these hearings, particularly uh, independents and even Republican voters are not. But it is impossible to not, uh, you know, have some of this information seeping down, you know, through editorials in The Wall Street Journal, other places. Uh, you know, what is uh, learned has just been, uh, you know, a, a huge breadth of information here. But I think more interestingly is it certainly has sort of shattered this myth that there was widespread election fraud. It has shattered this myth, at least in the eyes of many Republicans and others, that there was, uh, you know, some big fraud going on. But I think more interestingly is perhaps the biggest outcome of this is in terms of uh, the 2024 presidential race here, it has given other potential Republican rivals from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and others a window into the thinking of the former president. Yes, at this point, he still is the, uh, you know, uh, controlling the Republican Party, if you will, but certainly not, you know, with the the iron grip that it seemed several months ago. So that is something And it's, it's such a great an point that you here. make about sort of the grip that he has. Michael, I want to come to you because Georgia also had all these developments. Um, the DA there saying that she might subpoena more people. What What's the significance of what's going on there? Well, I think in, in some ways it's it's adding to the narrative that the January 6th committee is is laying out for the American public and doing what Jeff said, which is to seep into the American consciousness. Um, and the investigation, I mean, I thought it was interesting, the people that the investigators there in Georgia were uh, seeking to talk to, uh, some of the, you know, the obvious ones, the Rudy Giuliani's and the like, but I also uh, thought it was interesting they wanted to talk to uh, uh, Senator Lindsey Graham, who had been one of those people who had made phone calls to Georgia officials. Um, and, I, and, I, and I do think, and I, I think Jeff is right, but I, I think the big question is how much is this really going to matter? How much at the end of the day are Americans going to shrug off um, all of this as a, you know, a story that they already knew, that they already sort of felt somewhere deep down that they kind of understood that this had all happened? And how much of it is, or on the, on the other side, how much do they, do they suddenly wake up and say, you know what, like, we thought we knew what, what had happened here on January 6th and in the days leading up to it, um, but this is worse, this is different, and we're actually going to make different decisions. And it's a critical question to ask, like, how much is this going to matter? Laura and Josh, 30 seconds to both of you. What are you looking for next week as we think about these hearings and, and what lawmakers are saying? First to you, Laura. So uh, one of the first hearings is going to be a lot about the violence and what occurred that day, what the president and his inner, inner circle knew. How connected were they with, you know, these alt-right groups like Proud Boys, Oath Keepers? I'm going to be keeping an eye on that. Josh? Yeah, that's exactly right. And also the committee is expected to delve into what the former president was doing in that 187 minute time period as the Capitol was under attack and a future hearing that could be as soon as Thursday. One of the things my colleague Jackie Alamany reported today is that now that they've gotten more witnesses coming forward, they may expand the hearing schedule into August and there, this may not be the last of a hearing. So I don't think the story's over yet. Definitely, definitely not a story that is over.